Good morning, YouTube. So with today's video, let's dive in the brand of Bond number nine. Yep, I know. So, but this video here is gonna have a bit of a theme because we're doing an outdoor video here in Mississauga, but to be specific, Port Credit Marina. So right now, so this here is actually the Credit River. You actually have the uh, Lake Ontario over there. And back here you have, uh, forget the name of the park, but really nice place. So I actually reside in Mississauga, but I work in Toronto. And in the summertime, which it is, is actually July 3rd at 7.30 in the morning, first day of my holidays. I got next two weeks off, so I'm happy. Um, this place could be like really busy in the summertime, like as the day progresses. But there's a lot of people who fish here. I sometimes fish like more towards that way, like right over here. But uh, just a lot of pedestrians, joggers, and so on right but today's video we're gonna be doing this outdoor video because today we're gonna be talking about bond number nine's shelter island so this one has like an aquatic marine salty seaweed salty kind of vibe and that's why i wanted to film out here but i'm not alone we're actually going to be doing this video with steven from the channel redolescence so bond number nine's shelter island was launched in 2014 and is considered a woody aquatic before i give you my take steven please give us yours Hi everyone, my name is Steven. I have a YouTube channel called Redolescence. Yeah, Steven, I think they know who you are. And first things first, I just wanna say thank you to my friend Chad for inviting me to be a part of this collaboration. Thank you so much for welcoming me on your channel. It really means a lot. And of course, today we have the pleasure of discussing a fragrance by Bond Number no. 9, and this one is called Shelter Island. So I actually tried this fragrance many, many years ago when it was first released. I actually went to the flagship boutique on 9 Bond Street, and I tried this one in person, tried it on my skin and everything. And so I do have a little bit of experience with it. However, after many years of not sampling it, I kind of forgot the smell of it, and so Chad was so kind and generous to arrange for this sample to be sent to me and so Chad thank you so much for that my friend I really do appreciate it and after trying it a little bit over the past week I've come to realize that I really like this one and there are some aspects and components of the fragrance that are kind of nostalgic and they hit home for me and I'll tell you why in just a second and so let's just go ahead and start off by talking about the smell now, I didn't get a chance to look at the note breakdown in a long time, uh, but this one opens up very fresh. So you kind of have that citrusy freshness in here, and there's something green that is sort of offsetting that bright citrusy freshness in the opening, and something that's a little bit salty as well. And so it almost kind of has like this mossy fern quality about it, but you still have the brightness of the bergamot and a lot of those citrus notes in here. And you also pick this undertone of oud out from the note breakdown. And so I think it's that interplay and that contrast of the bright, fresh, volatile ingredients in the top and those dark, deep, resolute, woodsy ingredients on account of the oud in the base that really create that dichotomy in the note breakdown. But in the end, it's really, really interesting. So let me tell you why I actually really enjoy this fragrance. It reminds me of a fragrance that my brother used to own, which I kind of stole from him, and it's Kenzo Porom. And that's a fragrance with a very unique shape on the bottle, and I own that fragrance now. It's been many, many years. I think it's turned, and so it doesn't smell as good as it used to, but it really reminds me of that bright, fresh, oceanic vigor of the ocean kind of a fragrance. And, you know, after smelling this one, I don't know which one I want to purchase because I've been telling myself I would like to repurchase that Kenzo fragrance, but now after smelling this one and the performance that I got from it, I actually think I might want to buy this one. Very nice looking bottle as well. I know there have been a couple of reviews on YouTube for it and people generally have some really nice things to say about it and you can go ahead and add my positive thoughts to that list because I really do like this one. I find this one to be very appealing and very appropriate for the hotter weather. I think this one can be dressed up and dressed down because of those nuanced woods that are in the base. And I think that for the price tag, you are gonna be getting something with really good performance. And so Bond number nine fragrances are concentrated at Eau de Parfum. This one, I actually got better performance on my skin than Sag Harbor. And so I just finished doing a video on Sag Harbor. That one got me in the wheelhouse of six hours. This one got me upwards of eight hours. And I think it's because of the agarwood and some of the more resolute woodsy ingredients that are found in the base. But ultimately, I am really a fan of this one I'm really enjoying this one. And now you got me scratching my head and thinking, Chad, I think I might actually purchase this one. So 
Thank you so much for giving me that opportunity to, one, not just remind myself of this fragrance that I tried many years ago and I've been meaning to smell again, but also giving me an opportunity to really voice and express my opinions on this fragrance on your platform. It really means a lot to me, Chad. Thank you again so much. And of course, I enjoy your bond number nine reviews. I know you always have that quirky get up about you and I really admire your confidence, my friend. So. Thank you so much again. I really appreciate you giving me this opportunity. Thank you for checking on my channel. If you choose to check on my channel, my name is Steven. I have a channel called Red Lessons here on YouTube. Chad, thank you again for the invitation. I hope you're doing well, my friend, and we'll see you all very soon. Chad, I'm excited to get your thoughts on this fragrance. Steven, thank you very much. I really do appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next Bond video. So, spoiler alert, we're doing another one. All right, the note breakdown according to Forget, it's got top notes are gonna be lemon and black pepper, with the meat being white lily, but also seaweed, and the base is gonna be agarwood or oud, musk, sandalwood, myrrh, but also amber. What do I get out of this fragrance here? Now, it's been on my arm for like the last 30 to 40 minutes, and it's been on my hand for like the last three. All right, so in the opening, you're gonna get a really nice lemon, but you're also gonna get some of that spiciness from the black pepper. However, that freshness still maintains, but that seaweed accord comes in real quick, and I, that's why I kinda wanted to film here, just to give it a little bit of more authenticity. But you're gonna get that seaweed, but also that white lily or a white floral component. The white floral component is not overly pronounced. It's there, you'll notice it, but it's not overly feminine. I find that with a lot of these Bond number no. 9 fragrances, the unisex fragrances, this is unisex, they do dive more so towards the ladies out there, okay? And I find that the white florals that they put in really kind of like dominate, but with this one here, it doesn't. What really dominates is that seaweed, but then towards a little bit later, you're gonna get, like I would say like 30 to 60 minutes later, that freshness is still there along with the seaweed. You're gonna get some of that, that sandalwood with the musk and some oud. The oud itself is not overly oudy, it's not dirty, it's actually quite nice. And like the combination of the oud, the agarwood, along with that, that seaweed accord, kind of give it like a, a bit of a dank driftwood vibe. It's, it's like a log that just kind of washed up on the beach. It's a really nice fragrance and I really do like it. I was not expecting much, right? I was really expecting that white floral vibe, that white lily, or just like that floral component to really dominate, but it doesn't. It's really done quite nicely. Yes, it is a unisex fragrance. The ladies can wear it, but I find it dies a little bit more so towards the men out there. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. This will shine perfectly in the summertime, and I do think that you can wear it in the spring when it's a little bit warmer. If you live in a hot climate all year round, like Florida, Puerto Rico, or, or like a climate like that, you could wear this all year round. The versatility, it leans a little bit more on the casual side, but I do think that it's safe enough and like professional enough for the office, so I do think that you can wear this to work no problems. Longevity off this was seven to eight hours, so I wasn't disappointed. Perhaps with a bottle it might last a little bit longer, but who knows. Prices for this one here. Now, if you were to get this at the official boutique or online, like the, uh, the official online web store, website, you're gonna be spending a little bit of money, yet you can get a much better deal if you were to go to some of these online discounters. The problem right now, at the time of this recording, is that it's not easily available on like the main ones that I personally use, FragranceNet, FragranceX, Fragrance Buy, yet you can get a 50 ml on perfumeonline.ca for about $160 Canadian. When you convert that, that's about like 125 to maybe 135 at the most USD. So just look around for the best deal and just keep looking on some of these sites because I do they do restock them every now and then. In the end, what do I think of Shelter Island by Bond number nine? This did catch me by surprise. I, I was expecting this to be a lot more heavy in the floral category, but the sea saltiness with the woods really give it a really interesting vibe. This is part of their beach collection. They, they do have a beach collection along with like other lines. Yeah, this is not one of my favorites from their summer collection. I think it's unique enough, it's different, and it's something that I'm personally comfortable wearing. I'm not into a lot of these unisex fragrances that are heavy in florals, but with the oud, and I'm not an oud lover, but with the oud and the seaweed itself, it gives it that nice 
driftwood beachy vibe. Overall, I enjoy the scent. It's just not one of my favorites from the brand. Yet if you want something that's inoffensive, easy to wear, professional enough for the office, it might just make you feel a little bit more relaxed if you can't get to the beach during your work day, you might wanna look into this one here. Rating out of five, I'm gonna have to give this a three and three quarters. Again, it's not one of my favorites, and I was looking for a bottle, I'm not gonna deny it, because I, I do like Bond, you know? I'm a bit of a Bond bitch, but yeah, it's like we'll see, we'll see what the future holds, but I definitely did enjoy this one. So that is my review, but also Steven's review of Bond number nine's Shelter Island. So I'm actually gonna finish this vi video now because it's becoming a little bit more uh, chaotic, if you will, and I'm trying to keep my zen. So guys, if you like this very video, make sure to give me one of these. And if you wanna see some other Bond number nine videos, then they will all be in the description below. If you wanna see some other summer fragrances, then, both, then please check out both sides here. And also, please check out Steven's channel if you are new to this community. His link will be down below. So guys, thank you for your time, take care, and I'll see you later. Thanks for watching, everyone.